Welcome back, everybody. Okay, time for one more corn recipe. I told you we were getting extra corny today. We made these great corn pancakes uh, with a nice fresh arugula, arugula salad, a nice light dinner or lunch. Then uh, Chef Peter Kinsey from Zupa has just finished up that great corn edamame salad. How gorgeous is that with fresh tomatoes? We did two different corn chowder recipes, uh, one of them from the Appleton Beer Factory, uh, corn and um, uh, cheddar cheese chowder. And then I did, th at the beginning of the show, a, a shrimp and corn chowder that you can actually just throw it all in your slow cooker and it makes it really, really easy. So time for one last corn recipe. And this is kind of an old fashioned recipe, but man, is it good. Um, it's something, when I think of this recipe, I always think about Thanksgiving and all those great kind of comforty side dishes. And then I think, why don't I make this at other times other than Thanksgiving? It's really, if you're baking some chicken, this would be really easy to throw together. It goes great with meatloaf, um, what, really whatever you're cooking, you're grilling or, or baking pork chops. So it's pretty simple too, and you probably have most of the ingredients on hand. It starts with four eggs, and you notice I've got a really big bowl. The biggest bowl you have, that would be the perfect one to use. All right, and the first thing you wanna do is mix those eggs together. So just get a whisk and whisk them together. I mentioned I have a, another cooking demo coming up, um, not this Saturday, but the following Saturday, Saturday, September 20th at St. Peter Lutheran. Uh, they're doing a really a neat thing, uh, um, a, a basically 10 o'clock uh, Saturday the 20th, um, where I'm doing a cooking demo and you'll get to try some of the desserts and it's just going to be great, great fun. They're doing a, um, what really went all out. So I've got some great fall recipes I'm going to be demoing. So hope to see you there. Sometimes it's a kind of a time of year where there's not a lot going on on the weekends. Um, so come on out and see me. We had great fun at the Crafty Apple on Saturday. Okay, so this is one stick of butter that I'm just going to melt. This serves a lot, so don't be worried about the butter. Um, this is gonna serve, you know, at least eight people, and you probably have some leftovers too. So, okay, now I'm gonna get to work. This uses a mix of either fresh or frozen corn and two cans of cream style corn, which normally I'm not a big fan of, um, but it works great in this recipe. I wouldn't, I'm not a big fan of just eating it out of the can, but it really works nice in this. And it's very reasonable. So this is one of those recipes that dirt cheap to make, but really um, makes a nice side once it all comes together. And tell me, check on the butter. Thank you, Anne. Melted perfectly. My kids really love corn, especially in the summer, but really any time of year, and most kids like corn. So this corn pudding, I think they're really gonna love. Okay, so in with our four eggs, goes the two cans of cream style corn. Those are real easy to get it all out of there. Then we've got two cups of your choice of either frozen or fresh corn off the cup, uh, or you could use and you don't even need to cook this corn at all. It's just um, frozen corn that we let thaw, or this time of year, man, get a couple cups of that nice corn off the cob or roast it like Peter Kinsey showed us how to. And then we're gonna add a little bit of sugar, about a quarter of a cup of sugar, just to, it's not gonna be, you know, when you think corn pudding though, don't think um, real sweet, think more savory. We're gonna do some salt and pepper. And a pinch of cayenne pepper, not too much, just a little bit. You could leave it out if you didn't want it, but this is, don't worry, it's not gonna be a spicy dish at all. Now the key ingredient, well I guess it's all key, but we're gonna have to put some flour in here. So in goes our butter and it all goes in one big dish. This is my kind of recipe. Half of a cup of flour and then some Lehner's Heavy Cream. And I want to spray my casserole dish really well with cooking spray. Okay. Normally, um, 
for a lot of my casserole recipes, I say that you can make them ahead. Not so much this one. Um, this is because we've got the flour in there. This is one of those that really needs to bake right away, but it takes seconds to mix up. So I just want to make sure everything's combined. That flour is well combined. And then we want to preheat the oven to 350 degrees. This takes a good hour, 45 minutes to an hour to bake. So make sure and allow enough time for that. Makes a nice big batch, as I mentioned. So if you have a potluck to go to this time of year, this is a really a fun, inexpensive thing to bring. every little last bit of it out of there and then pop it into the oven. All right, I want you to come back with me because it smells so good. Between that and the corn that we're roasting, oh my goodness. This is just one of those southern comfort foods. Um, I don't know, there's just nothing like corn pudding. I just happen to really love it and it's one of those things I don't have too often. Oh. Kind of gets a little bit brown around the edges, and you actually want it to be, you know, scoopable. Um, I like to, you know, how you serve it is you just spoon it up like like corn pudding. So um, it's like I say, makes a great side dish. But you know what? If you're doing like a leftover night, you could certainly do um, just a nice salad with it. And I was looking for a big old spoon. Thanks, Peter and you just spoon it up just like this. So it's still a little bit creamy inside, piping hot, the edges get a little bit golden. And man, this is good stuff. My corn pudding recipes on the website. Coming up, we'll wrap things up. So stay with us, we'll be back.